Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today I'd like to spotlight something that the Texas Medical Association recently put out that lists almost 40 different activities and rates their risk level. I think it's a really great way for us to all understand that at the end of the day, coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, is likely to be around for a long time. And we need to all take a step back and look at the activities that we're doing on a daily basis and see which ones we're comfortable with. This is such a personal decision. No one can really make that decision for you and every single situation is so different. How old are the people living in your home? Do you have contact with people that are high risk? So I'd like to go through some of these activities and explain some of the rationale behind them. And once again, continue to try to provide reassurance. Let's look at the chart together. So as you can see from the chart, the scale is from one to nine. The items on the lower end of the scale are lower risk. The absolute lowest risk item that they determined was opening your mail. This is based on data that shows that SARS-CoV-2 most likely isn't really transferred from fomites. Fomites are objects that have the virus on them. As we've seen, this is a respiratory illness spread through respiratory droplets. So something like the mail that often sits in your mailbox for long periods of time out in the hot sun has very low probability of having the virus on it at all and an even lower probability of giving you COVID-19 because there likely are very, very few viral particles on an envelope. Next, let's jump to the highest risk activities. Those four activities include attending a large music concert, going to a sports stadium, attending a religious service with 500 or more people, and going to a bar. I'd like to point out that all of these things I'm assuming are inside. I don't think they're assuming that you're going to an outdoor concert where you can socially distance from one another. I'm assuming that these are all activities indoors and we know the higher risk activities include activities that include a lot of people over an extended period of time indoors with poor circulation. And these upper four items meet all four of those criteria. But I do want to point out that each item can become more risky if someone next to you coughs in your face or sneezes in your face. So for example, they list swimming in a public pool as a number six. I totally agree with that, unless you're sitting in a crowd with people on the side of the pool, no one's wearing masks and someone coughs in your face. Then obviously that risk level jumps up tremendously. But I do think it's helpful to look at this chart and realize we make decisions on a daily basis about our personal level of risk that we're comfortable with. I just don't think it's necessary to shame and highlight other people's activities when they simply have a higher threshold for tolerating risk. At the end of the day, it's what suits your family and your circumstances. For the people that live in your house, it's such a personal decision. Once again, I'd like to continue to stress hand washing, social distancing, and wearing a mask. Thanks for joining me.